Welcome to this short lecture on heart failure, specifically the causes of heart failure. Now in this lecture what we will do is we'll break heart failure in the causes into left-sided heart failure and right-sided heart failure and we'll look at the causes based on category, that being causes based on afterload, contractility and preload causes. Now when we have a look at this image here, what we'll see is we'll see a schematic drawing. We have the lungs up here, heart here, and the rest of the vascular bed here. So just following the blood flow really quickly, we've got the left ventricle here in the heart. It's going to push blood out of the aorta. So this is going to be oxygenated blood going down to the body. This represents the liver. This represents the GIT capillary bed, this represents the kidney bed, and this represents the rest of the body. Now, going through the capillary bed, all the blue lines represents deoxygenated blood, which returns back to the heart into the right atria. From the right atria, we go down into the right ventricle, which then pushes blood up through the pulmonary trunk, which then goes through the capillary bed of the lung, and returns back to the heart via the pulmonary veins, which is now oxygenated into the left atria. So when we look at heart failure, heart failure is essentially the heart's inability to pump blood out to the body for its demands. Now heart failure can be broken into different categories. You could have left-sided versus right-sided heart failure. You can do systolic versus diastolic. You could do acute versus chronic. And you could do preserved ejection fraction versus reduced ejection fraction. But today we're going to focus on left-sided and right and specifically when we categorize the causes. The causes that are caused by afterload, this is putting too much pressure or resistance against the ventricle contraction. Contractility causes, so this is an intrinsic problem with the, the heart or the ventricle's ability to actually contract and push the blood out. Or preload, or well, this is the amount of fluid coming back to it. And these are the categories that we're going to work on, both on the right side and left side. So let's start with afterload causes. So on the right, on the left side, should I say. So this is where the left ventricle is trying to pump against a uh, excessive amount of resistance. So a common cause of this would be systemic hypertension. And so basically, this is just where these vessels have all closed down for whatever reason, and it makes it really hard for the left ventricle to pump against. Another one would be if your aorta is stenotic, so it's narrowed. So that would also make it difficult for it to pump against. Or the valve there itself. So if you were to have this aortic valve also stenotic, that would be difficult, and that makes the afterload higher, which is going to put pressure on the left ventricle. So aorta valve stenosis. Now compare that to the right, it's almost the same thing but just in a different capillary system. So instead of systemic hypertension like this side, it's now pulmonary hypertension. So the pulmonary vascular is under high pressure which puts pressure on the right ventricle and it fails. Common causes of pulmonary hypertension would be COPD, so the lungs aren't working, therefore all the resistance is increased. We might have left-sided heart failure, which goes back into the left atrium, back up through the capillary bed, and so it's, the outer load here is due to left-sided heart failure. Another cause of pulmonary hypertension would be if you had a pulmonary embolus, so if a part of your lung has stopped getting blood, there's a, probably a VQ mismatch which increases the pulmonary hypertension and that would lead to left-sided heart failure by afterload. Or you might just have idiopathic pulmonary hypertension. So not sure, idiopathic hypertension. So that's the afterload causes. Now go into the contractility. This is where the heart muscle hasn't got the ability to actually contract enough and therefore it fails. So the most common one would be an MI, so a myocardial infarction. And this would be commonly in the anterior lateral portion of the heart. So that's MI. Another cause would be if you have certain myopathies to the heart muscles. So this could be due to infections. 
or drugs. Some drugs could be um, co uh, cocaine, alcohol, certain chemotherapy drugs can cause problems to the muscle. So these, these are kind of cardiomyopathies or problems with the muscle itself. Another one would be the outer sac of the heart. So if you, the pericardium, which is out here, if that gets inflamed, so pericarditis, the heart can't expand well to fill up with fluid, and that would be a problem. Or if that pericardium fills with blood, so if the blood starts to go in there and push back against the muscle, so that will be a tamponade, pericarded tamponade. Okay, and so basically all of these could come across here as well. So we could also have an, well, I'll change colors. We could also have an MI on the right side. So a infarct on the right side, that's usually going to be posterior inferior infarct. Um, but you could still have all these. So you still could, may have a tamponade or maybe pericarditis or something that stops the heart's ability to be able to pump well. And then finally, we finish with preload. This is where too much or not enough fluid is coming back into the into the ventricles and therefore it will then fail. So on the on the left side, it could be two further categories in here. We might put um, what we call an increased load preload, so extra fluid or a decreased load. So not enough fluid. So increased too much fluid in there. It could come from just hypervolemia, so too much fluid in the body, hypervolemia. So if a person was um, with IV fluid overloaded with with volume, that would also that would lead to an increased preload. Uh, if the valves that are going into left ventricle are leaking, so regurgitation, so that would be mitral and aortic regurgitation, so that goes into it. So we just call it mitral and aortic regurge. Another one, or we'll go to decreased. In terms of decrease, not enough fluid in, we could have problems with mitral stenosis. Okay, so the mitral valve is stenotic, this one here, so not enough fluid in. Or the heart's working very, very hard, like let's say in anemia. So long-standing anemia could cause not enough volume to come back into it. Going across to the right side, and it, same thing, increased fluid or decreased. So an increased again would be hypervolemia, hypervolemia. So the volume overload. Now going to the valves, obviously we're on a different side now. So instead of the mitral, we've got the tricuspid. Instead of the aortic, we've got the pulmonary. But that the same kind of issue. So it's regurgitation. So tricuspid um, pulmonary valve regurge. Uh, but one other one here would be if you have a congenital problem in the septum, that means we'll get shunting across. Okay, so the hole in the heart going backwards the other way, so that would be an issue as well. So shunting and then decreased, similar to that side, we're going to have, instead of mitral stenosis, we've got tricuspid stenosis, tricuspid stenosis, and we've got um, hyp hypovolemia, so not enough volume in the body, volemia, and I guess you could have all that also there, and probably also tamponade would um, play a problem with that, it's opening and not enough fluid to get in. So hopefully now you've seen the, the common causes of heart failure, both on a left side and a right side context. But what we've done is we've broken into these categories. So hopefully now when you think of all the possible causes, these are probably the most common causes of heart failure. Now you can logically see how they fit into these three categories and whether they're left or right side in their manifestation.